page for ages now. Welcome at home and maybe people here who are tuning back in to the video. Um, so we're at the summer school in Kikenzi. This is Leone, a lovely, lovely model. We've got a lovely group of people who've just done a bit of movement in the garden. Um, and now I'm going to do something for 20 minutes or so on here. Um, let's see. And I, like I was saying yesterday, is that turned off? This just because I'm gonna probably say halfway through, turn it off. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I was saying yesterday, one of the most helpful things I find before even putting anything on the paper is just to to kind of begin looking at your model and back to the paper and kind of get into that rhythm of movement that's involved in seeing and drawing down. And as you do that, you might begin to visualize the space that she'll occupy on your page. Um, there's big sheets of paper if anyone wants to go large, you know, feel free. But um, yeah, but I'm happy with this today. No, that's fine. I'm kind of considering the space that the dark hair is going to, you know, there's, there's this lovely um, section of dark hair back here and the bit that's attached, you know, that's clung to the head, you know. Um, okay. Yeah. And so I was saying as well, um, I think I forgot to mention it yesterday, the reason that I put the paper right over to the edge is so that there's um, so that there's nothing interrupting your seeing and drawing down. I feel like that's very, it's very important to me anyway to settle and to be able to see and draw down almost at the same time. So you're already planning your next move as you're making this one. There's a real feeling of eventually, and it mightn't feel, it mightn't feel like that straight away, but just remember to breathe and, and stay kind of as settled in yourself as you can. And just the last thing I'm going to, I'm stalling, like, you know that. Well, no, I call it stalling, but actually what I'm doing is easing myself into the process too. And I encourage you to do the same thing. And you each have a chair at your easels. So like I was saying to a few of you today, David Hockney used to say his favorite bit of equipment in the studio was his armchair because he would sit down and just take a pause. And it's a long day to be standing. So do build in pauses of, you know, use the seat. Okay. All of that. And then at some point, a beginning needs to happen to you. Like, <laughs> you need to start. So let's see. I think, um, hmm. So again, half closing my eyes, I want to find something that will kind of explain the general shadow shape on the, on the right-hand side of Leone's face as I'm looking at her. So I'm using oily. Would you set an alarm for 20? Oh. Okay. Is that okay, Leone? 20 from now? Okay, thank you. If that's okay. Um, so what I've started with there actually is the alizarin crimson. Yesterday, I think I started with the lighter red, the cadmium red. So alizarin crimson and a touch of the, the sap green, you know, the lighter of the two greens. I'm going to put those two together in order to see if I can make a color to represent the shadow that sits to the right of the, um, it's kind of on the temple there, that's where I'm looking at the moment anyway. And I'm holding the palette vertically so that I can see the color I'm aiming for as I'm making it. And also so I can see the consistency of paint. There isn't a, a pool of water down here, but it's fluid enough. I might, um, I might just put a touch more water into that. <clears throat> Okay, so you've got the scrap paper, there's some on the table again for each person to stick up there to test your colour and consistency. And then just steadying myself then. And finding, with my eyes half closed, something of the shadow that sits on the temple there. And I can kind of push it up a little bit maybe. Yeah. And then below that light on the cheek below the below the bone there's a little bit of a shadow I mean it's undulating around so I don't want a hard edge on it really for now um, and I'm going to use a little bit of the cadmium red so sometimes you might find as the dark changes to light that the color warms up a little bit and um, this is the cadmium red here and I'm just putting a touch of that in as we come forward, there's a little bit of warmth, I think, here. Um, and what I'm doing at the moment is making order for myself from what I'm seeing. 
um, and you'll have your pathway through your painting. You'll know I'm placing that there now. And now I know that that needs to be the next little step. So it doesn't have to make sense to anyone else, only yourself. Um, well, eventually, hopefully, it will make sense to everyone. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, okay. So I put a touch more green and then to, again, it's kind of sinking in a little bit below the cheekbone again there. Um, and bringing it forward a little bit. And then I'm going to find where I think the jaw would sit. And like yesterday, you know, it's not set in stone at this stage. I'm just doing my best to discover where parts are located. And the turn of the chin away from us, then I'm going to stick with this brush just because I've got the color I want on it. But it's maybe a little bit big for, um, for that job. But I'm just getting the turn of the chin as it goes away and it'll start moving up for the cheek then on that side just to get a little bit of a beginning. I didn't want there to be a, an, a broken edge at, that, at the cheek, at the, the chin. Um, and I'm wetting the brush all the way up to the metal bit so that it's not separating at the top, but then drying it off in order that it's kind of damp freely. And I'll soften into the, I don't want there to be, um, I'd want to soften the edge of that a little bit just for now. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and then I'm going to go back to the one and a half inch brush. I did order the brushes for people, by the way. It'll be Thursday, though, I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Um, okay. <coughs> I think maybe um, it'd be no harm to, to get something of the width of the face here. So I'm going to see if I can find um, a position for the ear. Um, so we've got the jaw and then the chin, the cheek here, and I think the ear is probably um, maybe going to sit back here somewhere. I'm pulling up and lifting just to find where I think the edge of the ear might be located. Um, and these are these are single layers of color that are, you know, just one layer of of paint isn't going to be too difficult to. Sometimes you find that all of the finding layers can stay there as you make, as you kind of focus in on, or as you kind of model the thing. And, and it's exciting having the approximate uh, things underneath. So, um, but it's also possible to lift off when it's such a light layer, if you needed to. What am I doing there now? So I'll just pull up and lift, I think. Didn't want there to be too much going on in there. And um, there's a connecting shadow between the cheek, between the temple and the cheek. There's a kind of a, a connecting shadow um, that surrounds the cheekbone a little bit and goes over towards the ear. Let me see now, where is that? It might be kind of here-ish. And it's, it's a little bit of a cooler color, I thought. And I'm going to carry on with this shadow that comes down from the cheek. There's a dark at the jaw a little bit there. Um, and I kind of know, like, the light is hitting this area, so I know all of that will generally be in shadow, really, and the brightness will be here. So, but I don't, I'm not inclined to fill it all in like painting a wall. I'll maybe wait until it's dried and carry on. Um, although it's probably no harm to, to let that be filled in so that we know the light is falling on the bone there. Um, and then something to describe where the neck enters and exits. Might be about here, I'd say. I think that might be roughly where the neck might be located. And I want to go across the face now to the other side. Um, in order to capture the, the particular turn of the head, it seems helpful to me to describe the space within which the, the eye on the left is sitting. I'm going to make a bit more, I think I'll just stick with the alizarin crimson and the sap green for that. Um, yeah. Okay, so, and I find holding the brush like that, if, not, if I've not got an awful lot of paint on it, holding the brush like that lets the paint accumulate that way. If there's too much coming out, you can hold it the other way maybe. Um, but I maybe actually take a bit of the color out of it because it helps me to hold it this way, describing the curve of the, um, the curve where the nose meets the eye socket over there. 
and when I relate it to the neck, it sits a little bit to the right of the neck, that curve. It sits a little bit to the right of where the neck enters the chin. So I think it might be, let me see, what am I doing now? So this is the, eh, it's not going to be there at all, I don't think. Just get a paper towel, I can lift it off. When it goes on straight away, you can kind of lift it off without, without any hassle, really. I was just thinking about it there, but I need to think about it also in relation to the ear and um, and the other the other eye. Maybe it would help me to locate the other eye first. I think it would because I was working a bit blindly there. I'm going to put a touch of ultramarine blue in. Um, <clears throat> I said a touch. <laughs> so I just need to put a bit more of the red and green mix in now. I'm kind of looking, I suppose, for something a little bit, a little bit darker to describe the, the dark of the eyebrow, maybe. Let's see. Well, actually, I'm going to go for the skin underneath it first, so not quite so dark. It's going to stand back, yeah. Okay, let's see now. Yeah, it's helpful to stand back, actually. Okay. And then I find the position, I think, of where the iris might sit, might be about there, you know. And it, it tends to be quite dark, the whole area of the eye, because it's overshadowed. You know, there's light on the forehead and it's casting a shadow into the sockets of the eye. Um, and what I'm, what I'm wanting to do really is, is keep the eyes working in relation to these marks that are around here. And if this then doesn't work, I can always make some adjustments there. That's what I've decided to do. So finding where the other eye might be located and the width of the other eye in relation to the width of this one. Forgetting even that they're lovely eyes and just seeing the shapes of the shadows and this shadow being wider and maybe a little bit deeper than this one. Um, so just filling in the general shape of what I'm seeing across across the face there. Um, yeah, I'll just lift that. Okay. And then the shadow comes forward to to run up the side of the nose, I think, a little bit. And I'd say burnt sienna would be a good colour for that shadow. A little bit into what's there already. So burnt sienna mostly mixed with ultramarine blue is what I would suggest maybe using just for the shadow that's on the skin, not quite in the socket, but on its way up to the nose there. Um, and then we'll move down. Yeah, I'm going to move down to find a, something of the underside of the nose, which maybe sits in the middle of the eyebrows there. And the tip of the nose having a tilt to that. And I think there's needing, I need to move the chin slightly up here, just a little bit. We'll see. But just, um, I think maybe it might be maybe more there, kind of. Catch that trip. You find that the, the, the runs can sometimes be, be very helpful to um, assist with a, a jawline or you know, it's 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 interesting where you lift the brush matters sometimes. I'm being kind of very careful this morning, aren't I? I feel very, but it's it's kind of nice sometimes to have a relaxed approach to to you know, I don't know it. Um, you'll see yourself how you're. Um, let me see now. Yeah, that's fine. And and then you know how I spoke about those things that help positioning um, the features on the face. And the next thing I think that would be helpful for me to explain there might be the um, shadow of the upper lip. I'm going to stand back because sometimes you can get stuck in doing things. Might be no harm to also, yeah. I think I'll use the two inch brush and just put something in for the scarf there. Or um, It feels like it would be a helpful thing to have a little bit of that colorful 
um, the bluish color coming in. So the cerulean blue, maybe. Just to ease things up a little bit. Yeah, it's dropping down a little bit there. Mm. No, I don't think I bother with a splash there. Um, yeah, so it kind of comes down to surround the shoulder. And then as it falls down there, there's that lovely, more ultramarine blue maybe, or cobalt blue if you have it. So I could maybe add that into the color there a little bit. Be just a little indication. Okay. And I think there might be a touch of blue that would be helpful to clarify the neck area just a little bit again, you know. Just use that brush to maybe push kind of push the drip up to carve around and Bring back down then. Okay, so I was talking about the mouth, but I think still I'm going to do something. Now that there's something down here, like I would be aware when you're working that you keep keep standing back because if I hadn't stood back there, I'd be, I'd be in the mouth now, you know. And I feel like it helps me to. We were talking about this: the spiraling in and spiraling out. That's the kind of inhale exhale of the creative movement, almost, you know. And it seems that as soon as I put something down there. I want to now do something up here actually and those will inform and kind of I, th I think maybe give me a bit of confidence going back into the face again you know having something around um, the outside something about the context but standing back will inform you I think about what needs to happen in your work and if you don't have an awful lot of space behind you what's also useful is to take a photograph on your phone sometimes and you can see it then as though you were standing far away. And sometimes that lets you know what might, what might need to happen next. And so I'm mixing the Van Dyke brown and the ultramarine blue together here, making a fluid consistency. It's all quite light, so it doesn't have to be very dark to read as hair yet. I, I can always deepen the tone later. Just to begin explaining um, the shape of the head with the, with the hair. And there's a direction where behind the ear it carries on up behind the, the hair. Um, so it's a continuous line up to where the hair stops and the space around it starts there. And of course then it does curve. There's a bit of a curve. And I'm looking too at the, the volume of hair. So I need more, a little bit more hair. Um, going back here, I think. Catch that run as well. I mean, sometimes the runs are grand. You can you can decide whether to leave them or it, it it might be the make chance essential moment. You know when you let the runs go and and that's okay too. Okay. All right. Um, and then I, I think it might be helpful to do just a touch of, of hair that I'm seeing that explains where the forehead stops and the space around, you know, and her and the hair begins, you know, where her head stops. Um, and where, and kind of where that meets the bigger bit of hair is level with the arc. You know, you can kind of find keys for yourself as you work. And it's, it's satisfying to do that. So considering where other things meet on the vertical, remembering that they don't have to all be set in stone early on. Sometimes it'll be way off. And it's just helpful information. So, you know, and you know that none of it is going to be, um, to have to be exactly right first. This is the, this is the, what, I, what I love about this process is the joy of fresh looking every time and trusting that what you've seen each time is enough and just placing that down. 
and moving on to the next thing, you know, so. Um, we might need to come back a little bit more there, I think. Yeah, and the height, you know, we can adjust things like the height as well. Um, but before I stop, I'd just like to do some sort of thing to indicate that the, the, the arc of the shoulder coming in can be explained by the hair meeting it. So I'm just going to consider where that would be. It seems to me that the arc can, continues through the nose, uh, between the nose and the mouth almost, so somewhere like there. Um, yeah. But sitting back from the scarf too and back from the ear so that it starts back here. Something like that might be the location of the, the ponytail bit of the hair. Um, and it's got a nice warmth to it as it goes up the way there. So I'll just put a touch of burnt sienna in. I think the, the colour kind of lifts your heart a little bit. If you, it's like you, if you've done a bit of work, reward yourself by looking for colour or something, you know. And uh, in, in relation to the ultramarine blue, there's a lovely, I think the burnt sienna does something, something nice with the blue. If you can get it to actually go on there. So just wet the brush a little bit more. Oh, that's, I picked up the alizarin crimson. Well, that bit was alizarin crimson by mistake, Jane. <laughs> I meant to put in um, burnt sienna. Um, which is in the same spot for some reason. Let me just, I can, I can lift a bit of it off. I mean, it's, it's grand. It's not like it's hugely different from the burnt sienna, but it's because it's at the back of her head. I don't want there to be something that's really standing out. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it, this is the color that I had originally meant to go there. That's okay. And then there's another little layer of that shade, but, you know, just, I think, you know, Suzanne said, my painting holds hands and comes up together. And this thing of like um, everything having an energy, keeping it tipping away everywhere. I think so doing a little bit on the hair, a little bit down here and then letting it dry. It works for watercolor because it's helpful for it to be able to dry and let it breathe for a while before going back to it and um, to the different places. Eileen, is the timer? Working, okay. Okay, I was wondering. Okay, so I'm just going to, um, again, I think the white and brown there was drawing attention to itself a bit, it was distracting me. Um, so I wanted to um, bring them together a little bit so that they weren't drawing attention. But you'll know yourself if, um, if that happens, like it, sometimes you can just let it alone. If it's not working, you can just leave a bit. But if it's pulling your eye, do something with it. If it's irritating enough that it's it's distracting you from the job in hand, do something with it. Then, like um, for me, there I needed to fill in the white spaces between the brown and the ponytail. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Leonie. That's that's fine. Okay, and I didn't do the mouth, but I will the next time. And I, what I was talking, thanks ever so much, that's great, no coughing or anything. <laughs> what I was talking about with the, those bits, you, you remember I was saying the, the two directions of the eyebrow, these are the things to look out for no matter where you're sitting. The two directions of the eyebrow, something to describe the shadow beneath the nose. It could be attached to the nose or cast by the nose. Something to describe the, the shadow of the upper lip, shadow beneath the lower lip, and then an anchoring down for the chin. I haven't done the, the mouth part, but you can see how you, you can describe form with a very few marks if you, if you go for those parts, as well as the shadows, you know, the, under the cheeks, the lovely sculpting that you were doing yesterday as well. So, yeah, the, that's it, I think. Any questions or anything? Or any? No? Yeah, so, yeah, Niwa. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So, is it the drips or something that you remember, or was it actually painting a vertical end? Yeah. I think if there are things there, like if there's a mantelpiece or a background that's got a line, and 
And sometimes it's helpful using, for example, the lamp stand. It's a bit far back for me now, but it's sometimes if the, if the lamp was there, even if I don't fully draw it in, it's sometimes helpful to see the vertical against the edge of the face. Um, but those paintings, I think maybe that you, you might have seen, might have been longer, over four hours. I don't know, with, yeah. with, line, with the background drawn in. We'll talk about it. Oh, did it? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. But if, yeah, if, the, if, if there's nothing at all there, I think I wouldn't really be inclined to put a line in. Um, yeah, but the drips and runs create lines that anchor. And it, I like that straight line thing. Like, so if there is a run and you want, to, you want there to be a pull to the back, for example, you might just turn your board to create, to create a horizontal drip. And, and nothing would be more, more horizontal than the run itself gravity will pull it like um <clears throat> i don't know if that's answering your question we can talk about it okay um yeah so yeah so onwards and upwards i'll go around and see um everybody and i'll maybe start with you maureen because you've got a side profile and it's different from the yeah thanks ever so much yeah all the best everyone and maybe show them the picture it goes up closer that's so far what's happened we might do an eye after a month after lunch okay Bye.